Good morning, everybody. Oh, how I miss getting to say that to the entire congregation gathered together on Sunday mornings. It'll come. It'll come soon. Be praying for that. And meanwhile, just endure. And we'll be talking about those things this morning as we talk about spiritual preparation. It comes from the Apostle Paul in the second letter that he wrote to young Timothy. Bear in mind, though, I want you to get a background of what Paul is feeling at the time that he writes this letter. He pens this in the last part of his letter in chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Paul feels like he's at the point of death, very likely inside a prison, and he feels like he's going to be executed very soon. So as he's expressing things like this, I, I want you to realize that what we're about to read in his mind is likely to be the last things he's getting to say to young Timothy. So as he's writing to Timothy, I want you to realize that he's thinking this is going to be something that Timothy's going to have to remember forever. In chapter 1, verse 4, he expresses his great feelings for Timothy. He says, I greatly desire to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Not just hoping to get to see him, he's greatly desiring it. He's remembering Timothy's tears. Now, those tears are likely to be one of two things. Uh, possibly tears that Timothy may have cried when he had seen Paul being persecuted. Or it could have been very well that he knew that it was the last time he saw Timothy, and Timothy was crying, weeping, that he didn't want Paul to leave at another missionary journey. Nonetheless, he's feeling those great emotions that Timothy had for Paul, and Paul says it's his desire, and he's looking forward he would be filled with joy if he could ever see Timothy again. So he's writing these words out of a great emotion feeling for Timothy, and he's feeling like, I'm not likely to be able to see you again because my departure from this world is at hand. So here's what he says about this spiritual preparation. He's going to be talking about being strong, enduring hardship, a focus that we need to have, and remembering Jesus. There are other things in this letter, and I hope to come to those next week. But today we're going to talk about, first of all, being strong. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Paul says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. As he's greatly desiring to see Timothy, he's also reminded that he needs to encourage Timothy to do things that are important in his spiritual preparation. And being strong is important in that. Now he says here, be strong in the grace. And you might ponder, what? What is he talking about particularly in that? Well, here's what I think we're looking at here. Number one, we are saved by the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2. It's not by anything we've earned. It's by the grace of God. We don't merit it, but God's offered it to us anyway if we would accept that being Christians. So being in his grace means being a Christian. As Christians, in other words, we are to be strong. That's part of that spiritual preparation that is important for us. In the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua, when God is calling Joshua to take command of all of, his, all of Israel and to lead these people to a land to conquer, he says this in chapter 1 of Joshua, verses 6 and 7. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people I shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to my fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous to be able to observe to do all the things that I've commanded, God says. Obviously, it's important for us as Christians to be strong. As we go through the struggles that we go through in this life and understand what's going on, strength is needed. We need to seek ways of improving our strength Praying and studying God's Word, obviously the basics, as we always go to, are the most important things that draw us close to God, that give us that strength. 
So there's the challenge from Paul through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Timothy and also from God himself uh, to Joshua to be strong. That's something important for our spiritual preparation. Be preparing yourself in that way. Number two, in verse three, we find the idea of hardships being mentioned and the importance of enduring this. This is what Paul says in verse three, rather. You therefore must endure hardship as a soldier of Jesus Christ. We all go through hardships. A lot of us deal with hardships, however, in different ways. We understand and we watch people that react to certain things, such as the, the recent tornadoes that hit in Chattanooga. A lot of homes were devastated. Some people were extremely struggling with that and pouring out tears and crying, and obviously it's an emotional time. But in the light of all that, some were saying, I just don't know what I'm going to do, and oh, I just don't know if I can ever survive. And, and yet there's some others that says, God kept us alive. I thank God I'm alive. And they're demonstrating a strength of enduring during a hardship time. You see, we all go through hardships. How we deal with those. We are to endure hardships that we face. The idea of enduring means to bear with, to tolerate, to withstand. And then he includes these words as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The world is watching us. We are soldiers of Jesus. We are his people. We are to be set apart from the world, to have a different perspective. This idea of putting with what's going on, because life is tough. I'm reminded of a friend of mine who used to say, life's tough, get a helmet. Obviously, there's some preparation involved in that. But in chapter 2, verse 10, I want you to notice one other thing that's mentioned about that. He says, therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. You see, there's a purpose involved in that enduring it. It's because we know that our brethren are also observing what's going on. They want to see how we react. We want to, they want to see how strong is our faith. So Paul says, I endure that for the elect. And continuing on, he quotes an Old Testament passage. He says, this is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. The endurance that God is calling us to do is to set ourselves as a model before the people, to endure like Christ endured, that the others can see that we are Christians. That doesn't mean that we are rugged and tough at one another or towards one another. I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, where Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, meek does not mean weak. See the difference there. Meekness means there's an attitude that we have toward one another while we are demonstrating our spiritual strength as followers of Jesus. Endure hardship, number two. Number three, in chapter two again in 2 Timothy, verse four, I want you to see he's talking about a focus here mentioned. Verse four, he says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. We are soldiers of Christ. He has enlisted us. We belong to him. There is a focus, you see, that needs to be done there. While we are engaged in our warfare, we don't entangle ourselves in the things of this world. Now, I want you to notice that word entangled, because as he's talking about it, he understands that we live in this world, but we don't get tied up by the things of this world. We're not wrapped up and consumed about those things. We're more concerned about the work of the Lord, about our relationship, about the way we behave. We stay focused on that. If you don't stay focused, Satan will take in charge of you. And this idea of engaging ourselves in warfare and not being entangled has something more to do than just the mental. I want you to see that as we're thinking about this, we need to stay on task. 
not with cracking the whip and beating one another, but the idea that we're in this mental discipline for one another, in front of one another, as examples for one another. We stand with Jesus, we stay focused with him, and we stay on our task. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, Paul reminds us to beware of the wiles of the devil. And so we understand that Satan is after us. Satan would love to defeat us or at least get us to lose our focus as a Christian, to lose our ability to be on task. Stay focused, endure hardship, be strong. Those three items and one more in chapter 2 again and verse 8 here. He says these words, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Spiritual preparation requires being strong, enduring hardship, staying focused, and remembering Jesus. He's our goal in all of this. He's the reason we do what we do. He is the support behind us. He's the one enables us to do that. Staying focused and remembering Jesus who lived that perfect life for us. I hope this week that you will stop and think about your spiritual preparation as we deal with these things. Maybe we're not near death, but it is an important time for us to consider as we live Christians that we're strong, that we endure, we stay focused, and we remember Jesus. I wish you a great week. I wish you time with Lord in prayer and time with him in studying his word.